Well, for more, we're joined by Catherine Bennett from our business desk. Good morning to you, Catherine. Uh, there was already a financial crisis before this uh, massive explosion. Then there's a coronavirus, of course. So what's the situation like in the country? Well, the blast had the effect of pushing the country even further into a recession. So the country's GDP was already at minus 7% last year. That sank to minus 15% earlier this year, and that's before the blast. And now economists are predicting that GDP will plunge from minus 15 to minus 25% before the end of the year. Lebanon is, of course, also wading in debt. Public debt accounts for 170% of GDP. That's one of the highest debt burdens in the world. And early this year, the country actually defaulted on its foreign currency reserves. Now, it began talking about a bailout with the, with the International Monetary Fund in March, uh, but the IMF was only willing to offer funding if Lebanon was willing to, to start working on extensive financial reforms. And because of that, talks actually stalled in July. Now, the explosion in the final straw for the country's economy, not the least of which because it's had a massive effect on the supply chains. Yes, that's absolutely right. So Beirut's port is a crucial site for the country's imports, for the country's supply chains. And there's a smaller port in Tripoli, which is north of the capital, but that isn't able to handle these additional volumes that it now needs to handle because of the explosion. So this has caused huge ruptures in the country's supply chains. And that's important because Lebanon is a country that actually produces very little itself. It imports around 75% of all of its food needs. So the explosion uh, destroyed the country's main grain silo at the port. So now the country finds itself with a population of 6 million people and only a month's reserve left of grain uh, and a capacity as well, which is a fifth of what it once was with that silo now destroyed. So the explosion has, of course, had a huge impact on food security in the country. And that's been mitigated by the aid that's been coming in from other countries after the explosion. But of course, when that aid runs out, Lebanon won't have the foreign currency reserves in order to get the imports of what it needs. And what does all this mean for the people in Lebanon? Well, they've obviously seen their money uh, lose its value at an incredibly rapid rate. Uh, the Lebanese pound has lost more than 80% of its value since October last year. Now, the Lebanese pound has been pegged to the US dollar since 1997 at the rate of £1,500 per US dollar. Now, it's been a very long time that that hasn't been the case. The Lebanese pound currently is trading at over £8,000 to the dollar on the black market in the country. So this, of course, has had an effect on citizens finances. Uh, since last year, uh, people have been frozen out of their own savings accounts uh, in banks, and banks have also blocked transfers abroad. So people are seeing their, their life savings dwindle to an almost worthless amount. And Lebanon has also become the first Arab country to enter hyperinflation. That was earlier in July. Uh, and that has, of course, sent prices skyrocketing and making food unaffordable for large parts of the population. So whereas before a third of the population was living on the poverty line. Now that number is more than half of the population who will be on the poverty line before the end of the year. Um, and of course, along with that, hunger in the country is going to get worse. By the end of the year, more than 50% of people in Lebanon will be at risk of being unable to access basic food supplies. And one in two children in the country's capital, in Beirut, eat less than one meal per day. So with all of these staggering statistics, it's important to recognise, of course, that this is due to mismanagement and corruption in the government. Years of corruption and years of financial mismanagement. And as a result of that, it is, of course, the population who is suffering the most.